So where do we find you today, Mario? I'm in Amsterdam right now. What is the situation in um, Poland? In Amsterdam? In Amsterdam, it's actually, yeah. I mean, look, um, I, I spend a lot of time in LA, in Los Angeles, so that's where I live. But my family lives in Amsterdam. So at the moment now, it's just like similar, like everybody else around the world. We're all cautious about the illness and trying to make the best out of it. How would you describe the social side? How is it affecting you at this very moment? I mean, look, I, I think think my, my history is from Amsterdam. So I try to um, keep the distance as much as I can, of course. Uh, fortunate with your family. You try to manage to... I'm very, I have a very close family. Thank you to my mom. But um, I spend a lot of time with them. So I don't know how it feels to be lonely or unhappy. So that I can't answer you. But the other part is that the, the, the freedom, of course, is a, bit, a little bit blocked. So that will be my, my first thing that I would say that will make me unhappy and the happiness of um, not being able to do all the things that I want to do. How would you describe the way that uh, the football federations have dealt with the whole situation? I mean, the Eredivisie is cancelled. I mean, you know that I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a definitely a public figure, you know, in the sense of being a lot on TV. And my sense is more that I want the game to go on but I don't want anybody to be effective or for anybody to be, you know, I want them to be cautious. I felt like um, when I saw the German league kicked off, there was one of the big leagues, you understand, compared to, to anybody else. And for the rest, we're waiting in Holland. They stopped the league. So it's a sad thing because, you know, we love to be entertained and watch the team, especially because coming from Ajax and spending some time at Ajax before we got the lockdown. So that is kind of crucial. But I, I just hope that the players that are leaving, because I work a lot with the Premier League and uh, that's where my history is from, I just want to make sure that nobody gets sick or ill, but I do want to see them perform because I love football, man. I mean, like everybody else, I think we all love the game and that's why we want to see the guys entertain. But doing it in, a, in, a, in, a, in an empty stadium, I mean, if it has to be like that, I watched the Bayern against uh, the Dortmund game the, the other day, but... Football is around, it's about the people that are watching you. So I hope that can go back as soon as we can. But I don't want anybody to get ill. So if we have to wait, we just have to wait. Was it the right thing to cancel the Dutch division? Um, look, uh, if it's the right thing, if it's, if it's regarding illness, uh, yes. You understand? But, but do I want to see them play? Yeah, because the league is now suffering. I mean, Fortune and I stepped up and said, like, hey, if we can help somebody uh, in the financial support, we will do that. But imagine there was no team like Ajax and thinking like Ajax, it would be a big problem for this league because Ajax needs this league to perform on a higher stage. Do you think that this would affect the Dutch players for the next year's Euros in some way? Yeah, I mean, look, it won't affect you anymore because I think... It depends what the next season does. If the season kicks off well, because we had to leave this year to let it go this summer. So, of course, we miss out to some great entertainment. But if we can pick up next season and continue the season all the way in a good way, there are some players in the Holland League that you're talking about that I definitely need this kind of playing. So you have a guy like um, uh, in, 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 um, in France uh, and... and, and some players of the national team of Holland, they, they got injuries. And for them to come back, I mean, that's really crucial. So that's why I want to make sure that if we can get everybody fit. We are capable to, um, to impress ourselves and making sure that we really advance ourselves. What's your opinion on the Cumber's manager? He said that's the biggest disgrace in the history of sport in, in Holland, in the Netherlands, to have cancelled the leagues. <laughs> I mean, look, if you are a team, you understand, you know also the teams that are talking because the teams that want to go up and the teams that want to achieve bigger and better things, I can understand that they maybe feel, you know, left out. And some of the teams as well, um, uh, you got like uh, like AZ that were close to winning the league. I'm sure, I'm sure they're going to talk um, about themselves and saying that, hey, we could compete and we could win it. But on the other side, guys, look, there is one thing. Healthy comes before football. Do you understand? And I want to make sure that everybody understands that. If it comes regarding your health, 
you know, and, and I know finance is something that people think about because that's all a part of the, the, the football. I want to be entertained. I'm a fan of football, so I want to see it on TV. But one thing I never want to forget is that if we are at, at, in problems to come and watch the best game in the world, then we should be careful. And if that's not the case, then we should be playing it. You have more than 10 years in the history of the Premier League playing for teams like Chelsea, Birmingham and Wigan, of course. But do you think that the season will resume? Are we going to see the Premier League anytime soon? We're going to hear really quickly um, because now I've been working from home. So I'm doing a call with you. But before that as well, you know, I'm very, very closely with the Premier League itself. So I call a lot of games. I spend a lot of time, you understand, in the studio. At this point, we can't do it. So we do it from the computer. But I do hope that the Premier League will pick it up. We're going to hear very quickly because all the teams start training already. So all the players are already uh, together and, and, and training. And I know it's very cautious. And some of the players got caught again in the sense of like being affected by it. It's not a good thing uh, for the person that's involved in it, but it's also not a good thing for the person that's watching it. So including myself. So I just hope that soon we can pick this back up and that we can all be, uh, you know, talking about the game again. You as a former Chelsea player, you must have, let's say, hated playing against Liverpool, but they are the first in the Premier League. Should they be crowned as champions if the season is cancelled? You, you, that's a crucial question. Look, I, I, I feel like they deserve the league. You understand? They have performed to a stage um, where we have to give them respect in that. They've been fighting for that so long. The downside will come if they just get the trophy without finishing it. Because I don't see anybody catching them. Let's move on to the Euros, which is officially Euro 2021, should we say. And Amsterdam is uh, meant to hold some four, four games. Uh, do you think that there will be any difference in the organization for hosting those matches uh, because of the coronavirus? No, I mean, look, I, I, I live in a country where um, we think about more than just only the game. And we think about the people that, that are um, actively participating in the game. So if that is the case, I think Holland will definitely stand up and, and make it count in the sense of like, guys, be careful what you're trying to do. But if that's not the case, oh, yeah, we're playing this game for sure because we're Dutch people. We love football. So I don't see that stopping us from, uh, from entertaining ourselves. But away from that, if the illness would stay at a level that we can't control ourselves, Holland will be one of those countries that will stand up and try to make sure that it, it won't be entertained here. The Euros was meant to be special by being played in 12 different countries. Do you think that this will still be the case for next year? It's, it's a great initiative, though, because it's really great for the countries that normally wouldn't even, you know, they wouldn't even get a chance to play a game at that particular moment. They might get it later, but not at that particular year. So I think it's great in the sense of that everybody can touch it a little bit and feels, you know, more and more like a unit. And if 12 are involved, I mean, why would I not like that? You understand? That's just for every nation now to be participating in it. So that's why I just hope that the outcome is going to be as great as, as I'm looking at the Euros now. So if the outcome is great, we have nothing to lose. Of course, the Netherlands are in the same group as Ukraine, Austria, and you're yet to find a fourth uh, opponent. What's your opinion about the group and what are your chances? Look, look, the Euros is always the game that you play. Um, my, my last one was uh, 2008. So when you, um, when you play um, the Euros, the key thing is what I say, 2008-7, I think it was. Or was it eight? I'm just make me, making myself confused so long ago. But anyway, my last Euro that I played, and it was in Austria. But the thing is, <coughs> what you got to focus on is that you make sure that, that you perform on that day because sometimes you could be the better side including Holland but at that day it's only one team counts it's the team that's in form or the team that knows how to win do I believe Holland can get to the next stage of course I believe that because you cannot participate in the game and believing already that you lost that game because anyone that participates in something and already sees himself as a loser will always lose what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of Bulgaria 
Bulgaria. I, 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 you know what the good part is like years ago, I was living in France and I met somebody really interesting. There was half French, half Bulgarian. And the, the thing is that that's how I know your country a little bit. I, I think it's, it's a very fascinating place to go to. Um, it's very interesting too, to go to. The thing is that people um, should be talking about your country way more than they already do. So I think what I like about it is, is, is it's, it's uh, the mindset. If it keeps on pushing to be more global, it will help your country a lot more. And that's what I feel. And on the other side is that I can imagine, I'm sure that you guys, you know, try to make the best out of life. And I'm sure when things get back to normal, you're smiling like my, like my own big smile. But in terms of football, if we have in to say... In terms of football, that, that, that's what I said. Like, um, uh, I, I played against uh, the... Um, I think I played against with Holland. We played against the, the Bulgarian team. If I'm right, uh, it was the, the... We played a qualification game. And it was kind of tricky. The thing is, is with you guys, you always seem to have one or two diamonds in your team. So I think... That is the, the, the crucial thing when you talk about your country. If you can fix, you know, make sure that you pick those diamonds and excel and make it even a bigger reach than just uh, a smaller number, because that's really crucial. And I'm not talking about, I'm not knocking all the other guys off that are making it because they're big players too. But I'm talking about they have the guys that maybe one or two that plays at Man United or one plays at Chelsea. You know, like you want, you want all of the 11 players to be at a stage that is so high that people cannot, you know, they're untouchable. In the Premier League, uh, you have faced Dimitar Berbatov, who is one of the best Bulgarian strikers, should we say. What was, what was it like for you as a defender to, to play against him? I, I like him. Why? Because, you know, that's why this was one of the players that I played against with Holland. Uh, and also when I was uh, playing in England, Berbatov is, is an exceptional player. The control of the ball that he had, the skill that he had. I, I felt like he was always smarter than most of the people that he would face. And I think that was his advantage. You know, when you, have, when you are a player that is that intelligent, when we were facing them, um, the coach even said that. He said, make sure you keep him quiet. If you keep him quiet, we win the game and we get qualified for the next stage. And we did that, actually. Um, but away from that, just when I played against him, he's an exceptional player. I like him as a human being, too, because if we had a small chat. He was never like, he's a winner. And that's what I like. I like players that like to win. They enjoy winning. But away from that, when the game is over, you could be a human being. And I could see that in him. So that's what I enjoyed in my time. Can I tell you that I know him super well? I will never lie to you. I don't. But do I know him as a player? Great player. But Bulgaria's best ever footballer was Christos Tichko, a player of Barcelona. What about him? You don't need to ask me if I know him. Come on. That's, that's one of the guys growing up, you understand. I played street football. And we always call each other certain names, people that you like. And Stoichkov's name would come up. You understand? He's, he's one of the talented... You have wingers, and you have wingers that know how to be the player. Some wingers are just, you never want to see them on a one-on-one. -on -one. I would never want to face a player like that on a one-on-one. -on -one. When he dribbles at you with his left, just the way he dance passes players. And I, the last thing I saw him learning how to do the skippy road, and Johan Krug was teaching him. Him just as a player, I just admired him. You know, and, and there is no, there's nothing I can say about him that I, I, I didn't like on the field. So about when I talk about Stoichkov, yes, you know, I would call myself Stoichkov when I was playing on the street. Did I do the things that he do? No. But did I want to believe, you understand, at that time I was like, what, a teenager? Yeah, I wanted to be a Stoichkov, of course, because he's super great as a talent. Moving back to you, if tomorrow they make a statue of, Mario Melkit, what would you like to have written under your name? I actually own a playground in Amsterdam, so I'm really grateful with that. And it's called Mario Melkit. So if the statue will be there, it will be the same name. But I'm not a statue guy. The playground was really the initiative. Uh, I think that's probably one of the key things in my life that I achieved when the government gave it to me was in Amsterdam. When you have your own playground and it's written with your name on the floor and when you promise your mom that 
you know, you will always respect her last name. So, you know, having Melchior there, you know, like respecting it, like, like even my granddad, just you always try to give back to the nation or the people where you come from. And when I could do that, that was one of the key things. And I think a statue, I understand that, but I think that was one of my biggest achievements. When I, every time I walk there, I look on the ground and I see my name and I'm grateful, my friend. The football gave you a lot, but it also took a lot from you growing up as a child. How much have you sacrificed to become the player you did? I, I think I think what you're asking me is, is very, very, very good. I like that question. Why? Because there's so many people around the world that think that football is easy. And they only see the finance, the games and the achievements. But they don't see you being alone in hotels. People will say, oh, I love a hotel. But do you love to be in a hotel on your own all the time and thinking about, you know, killing the time and trying to, you know, maybe spend two days before the game comes and you're on your own. You understand? You got to entertain yourself. Okay, one time it's cool, but then after that, it's not. You got to train hard. You got to give everything up. You, you hear fans around the world. Am I complaining about it? No, because I love it. That's me. You know, I love to perform and be around players that want to perform. And did I have to sacrifice some stuff? Yes. But I will never look back and think that I, I made a big mistake. If you had to share with us something from the kitchen, as they say, from the changing room, a funny story or a moment, what would it be? Um, let me think. From the from, from the kitchen? or What are you talking about? Like, like the dressing room? Yeah. yeah. Like uh, from the dressing room. If you, if you, okay. We had, a, we had a player in our team. I think it was Bob Magida when I was at Ajax. And um, he always had his flip-flops really nicely fit to the, to the floor. And I think if I'm right, we one time, he came to training with really bad clothing. So he took his, his jeans, put them in the fridge, and glued his flip-flops to the ground. As he wanted to step into his flip-flops, he fell over, and we all started laughing. So stuff like that. Because sometimes people in the dressing room are like kids. We would do some stuff like we had a player in our team, um, a guy called Danny. But Danny Cruz Cavallo, and we had I had Cliver in my team at that time. And Patrick would knew that Van Gaal would come in the dressing room and look if the guy already arrived and if he was late. What Patrick would do, he would grab his clothing and hang them up on Danny's uh, uh, spot. So then when Van Gaal comes by, he thinks, oh, he's already here, so he's on time. We would do that in a row a couple of times. But after a while, Van Gaal knew that that kid didn't turn up on time. So we all got caught. So moments like this, they are really crucial. So those are like kind of tricks that you can use, you understand, growing up. You don't want to make sure that, that I think when you're a team, you want to help each other, but you don't want to get in trouble. But at that moment, we are a team. So when he hang up his clothing, he would grab sometimes, he would put his own jeans, sometimes he would grab a different jean. But after a while, you understand, if your coach is smart, like Van Gaal, like the one we had, he knows his kids, so we got caught. And my last question is, if Mario Melkett weren't a football player, where would you have been today? If I weren't a football player? Yeah. I actually, I was thinking about uh, owning a store or something, you know, like uh, the key thing for me and the key things that I do is, is always enjoying life. So I went to school to actually open a store. So I think I probably will own one of those. You understand? I'll try to own one of those. Let's say it like that. What kind of a store? I, I thought it was sports. I love sport. Sport was one of the things that I really admire. So if I could step up and, and get myself uh, involved into sport, like football shoes or, you know, inspiring younger people, understanding, making them understand what football really means. I think having a store like that and really having a, a chat with people and make them feel comfortable, that's what I, what I like and that's what I am. You understand? No one is a stranger to me. So when they come to my store, they should not feel like a stranger, but they should feel at home.